Hello and welcome back. I am going to be recording an audio version of this on my podcast, which is The Honey Temple and also the video version on my YouTube channel, Soul Self Mastery. So welcome back. If you're listening, if you're watching, my name is Lee, intuitive wellbeing coach and teacher. And today is a very special episode. Normally I record um, videos, energy readings, and I do not edit them. I just, you know, I just see what comes through and I put them out. This one was a bit different. I did record an episode yesterday and it just, it sat with me all night and it just wasn't, it wasn't right. So I wanted to come on today and record another one. And I really wanted it to be focused on the energies at this time. So I am recording this on the, yeah, the, the 27th, I've actually wrote Thursday, that's Wednesday, the 27th of March, 2024. So we are closing out the energies for March, but because we're in an eclipse doorway, um, this video couldn't be about March. It has to be about April as well. So this is why I'm calling it um, the Astara Eclipse Easter Portal, because that is what we're in. So I thought I would come on. I have recorded actually a beautiful activation. I'll just mention this at the beginning. And I'll probably describe it throughout if, if it's relevant, but it was, it took a wee while for me to bring this through. In fact, it's a very different activation from the ones that I have done before. If anybody has done those over the past few months, um, I felt like a call to bring through these healing activations. Um, they are very powerful, very powerful healing clothes and just really help us at this time for a very small energy exchange to really understand, ground and integrate the energies. And um, I really experience these energies. I always, as a spiritual teacher, healer, um, always experience these energies a few weeks before the collective. So then I can understand them and then bring, create something and bring something through to try and help. But again, when you're channeling anything, you don't know what's going to come through. So this is a very, yeah, it's very different. So the 222 portal I, um, activation that I brought through was all about the dragon energy. This is a lovely follow-on, actually. If you did do that one, um, this would be an amazing follow-on because, however, you don't, you didn't need to have, you didn't need to do that one. You all go through the energies anyway. I just help you understand it. So this would be a lovely one to start with, also if you are new. Um, but many of you messaged me after the last activation and said, Lee, you just left us in the dark at the end, <laughs> which I, because it was channeled, I couldn't even remember. So what was the interest? And I said, yeah, well, we had to be in that to birth anything. You have to birth it from the dark in the dark of the womb. And this, the, the 222 one was all about manifesting and all about what we're calling in the next year. Um, so this one is you know, as a real nurturing one, it is all about, um, yeah, well, I'm going to explain it now because it actually is connected to the energies at the minute. So it's, it's, we go on a beautiful shamanic journey. We start off in the dark and it's very like Alice in Wonderland theme, um, where the hare comes and the hare is our guide and we go on this beautiful treasure hunt. Um, and we go and collect eggs, which, um, what I'm hearing is recre reclaiming lost parts of ourselves and we there's also a symbolism in each egg so go quiet to allow you to really connect with your higher soul self your guide your angels your loved ones to get um, to um, interpret the symbolism and then that will help you with next steps and then we put these eggs um, into each chakra there's eight eggs you put them into each chakra because we have eight chakras within the body we have 12 or outside eight within so we put the one at the back of the neck is called the altar major. So we put these eight eggs in each chakra with the re the reclaiming gift of the lost part of us, which you will see or you will not see, whatever is meant to be. And I always encourage you to repeat the activations over and over and over again, because there's such powerful, strong healing codes that your body will just sleep. Um, and that's why I brought it out um, at the end of last week, I think, last weekend. And I recorded it as soon as... A star uh, um, hit and the spring equinox, which I'll explain in a wee second. But I wanted to do this video um, in case you didn't um, do, didn't want to, you know, didn't feel called to do the activation. 
we will be going through the energies anyway or you were interested wasn't sure what it was and this will give you more information so this will just help you understand what on earth is going on basically <laughs> But with the activation, the chocolate, it uh, the, the egg turns into cacao chocolate, uh, which is the symbolism of this time, which is essentially mother's milk. It's plant-based medicine, calming, magnesium, nervous system, rebalance, all of that. And that goes into each chakra and corresponding hormone and organ. And what it does is actually whenever you bring a healing substance in, it draws out the toxins. So the toxins come out. And they form like a shell around our body like an egg and then we break free from the egg at the end we do a lovely little kundalini dance which balances the masculine and feminine so there's about 15 minutes of explaining the energies and then 15 minutes of the activation so it's very beautiful and i'm going to leave it available until the eclipse doorway closes which is on the 8th of april okay so i just had to explain that first um because there's a lot to get through and i want to be quite um I've actually normally I don't pre-shuffle um, and I didn't pre-shuffle yesterday and there was just too much to say so I want to keep to a bit of a script um, to get this energy out because it's really important what uh, what's going on at the minute and you know this year 2024 as I said when you've watched my previous uh, videos or uh, podcast is uh, it's a leap year and the last time there was a leap year every four years there's a leap year and the last time there was a leap year was 2020, which was a massive year for us, as we know. Um, a massive global global awakening. A massive death and rebirth year, actually. Um, and when there is a leap year spiritually, I'm all about the spiritual symbolism. And symbolism is the language of light. And when there is a leap year, it's, we are being asked to take massive leaps. Massive leaps of faith. Um, massive courage. And we will not be shown, we will not be shown what will happen, what's the outcome, because there's so many available outcomes and what we call timelines available to us in any given moment. And it is our free will whether we choose that. And we have got it all available to us. What we wish for in our life is available to us um, by just having the thought and the belief and then the action. That is what's going on at the minute, okay? And when there is a portal, a portal is just a doorway. It's just an energy, it's just a, an opportunity where actually the divine, the universe, God, goddess, whatever your belief system is, is supporting you at this time with whatever you have been calling in and manifesting. And whatever your dreams or desires are, whatever you wish your life to look like, whatever, you know, if you've been trying to, solve something or find a solution to something the energies at this time within a portal help support that and it will feel intense because it's pushing you through almost like pushing you through the birth canal so it's this expansion and contraction expansion and contraction which is what cacao does actually to the heart center okay so there's many different things going on and that is why you know the start of this year the first three months, we're nearly at the end of the third month, has been quite intense. It is quite fast moving because it's a leap year. And because what I'm hearing is it, it's been all leading up to this portal where you have the first element of this triple portal. The first part is the, it's called Istara, Astara Spring Equinox. Okay, so the Spring Equinox is your traditional name. Um, the star is the ancient um, pagan name, if you like, but really all that means is that's, you know, it's connected to the earth. It's earth medicine. It is connected to the Divine Mother. It's the way we, when we were in a, in a time where we were connected, where there was no fighting, where we were in a place of love and just union. Um, we, you know, I, I work with the eight turnings of the wheel, okay? And we've just come through Imbolc, which was Bridget energy, and now we're in Astara, okay? And um, one of my roles, I feel, is to help us remember, you know, these times, these ancient um, rememberings, how we used to live um, in harmony and balance and peace. One of the things that I want to bring through and I want to talk about is the menopause, okay? Just be pause this for any males watching but this would be good if you had partners or wives i cannot watch this anymore 
and how we're in so much fear of this menopause and how that's us, that's us done as women, that's us drying up. You know, it's like a death. It is a death, but it's actually a rebirth. It is an initiation. We have these three phases as a woman, as a woman, okay? When you first get your period, which is your maiden energy, okay? And around 13, that sort of age, 11, 12, whatever. Um, it's becoming earlier. Um, that's another story. And then you have the mother energy when you give birth. Okay, or if you don't physically give birth, you'll give birth to a business or life or that's another and that's a massive death. The third initiation in life as a woman is the crone energy, which is no priestess crone, which is known as the menopause. Okay. And you know, I we we have created this name and created blocks and fear around it, which is what we always do when there's a feminine energy. <laughs> And it's actually one of the best times of our life. The energy that we will have, you know, entering this stage, the freedom, the laughter, that is what's available to us. Menopause is connected to your power, being in your power and your purpose, the wisdom that you have that you didn't have as the maiden, okay? And you were running around nurturing as the mother. Now it's time for you as a wild, wise woman. Okay, so that is coming too. <laughs> All right, this is why I didn't want to get off a tangent here. Okay, so but this is the this is what a star is. A star is actually it's the goddess of spring and fertility. And actually, I'm 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 just looking at um, Lady Nada here. Um, if you're on the video, Lady Nada is a very powerful um, priestess. Very powerful. Um, what's the word what's these cards called sorry keepers of the light um guide okay and actually i've never put the connection before that she is actually a star because a star is colors all like pale pinks and pale blues and um flowers you know these beautiful um, roses primroses and things like that so lady nada is connected to heart awakening awaken to acceptance and divine love give and receive and balance and that is what's happening in the minute we are going through a massive heart healing heart awakening and um and there's many themes at this time okay and one of them is forgiveness and that's why um transformation is a big theme at this time as well which is connected transformation when you think of transformation you think of a butterfly that's another symbol at this time and um that's what I've been shown many as, you know, when I work with my one-to-one -one clients, that allows me to understand what's going on with the collective, okay? Um, and all I've been seeing is butterflies flying out of the heart. All I've been seeing is us in a cocoon and we're finally breaking out of this cocoon that we've been in for a very, very long time. That is the death and rebirth, but we're not quite out of it yet. So we're still in this dark and this unknown and what's happening and that's when we can create all thoughts and fears which can take us off our path okay so stay grounded stay in awareness which is why i do these videos you know and that's probably why this activation this time is very nurturing very healing bringing in cacao and the feminine to heal the organs the cells the chakras and the hormone balance the hormone glands okay so a star at goddess of, of the of spring and fertility Okay, and this is where the word Easter actually came from. Okay, and it's actually where the word estrogen is connected to as well, which is the female hormone. And um, estrogen, you know, we have estrogen receptors all over our body, and estrogen is connected to control. And this cut talks about giving and receiving. And you know, when our feminine energy is out of balance, we give too much. You know, the feminine is the give, the, is the giver. You know, the giver and the receiver. Okay. But it has to be in balance. Okay, so for many, you're being asked to bring that back into balance this year, which is a year of balance. What you may be shown, though, is where it is out of balance, is where people have crossed your boundaries. And it will come up in a very explosive way at this time because we're in an eclipse already. The eclipse is, I know I always use this term, and many people use this term, but I can't think of another term, <laughs> is like, full moon or a new moon on steroids massive energy massive change massive explosions you know um to get your attention to look at something okay and because you know we have the astara um spring equinox 
which was on Wednesday the 20th of March, which was the last Wednesday I'm recording this a week later. Um, then we had the eclipse five days later on the 25th of March, which was Sunday past there, okay? Um, and it was a full moon, Libra, okay? Which is the scales, which is balance, okay? That was also, the, the equinox was also, spring equinox and a star is also the start of the astrological new year. So we, we, you know, we talk about doing New Year's, New Year's resolutions and new start new projects, new diets, new creations in January. That is not the time. We are not in the flow of the universe, of the land, of our own bodies, of our feminine. We are still resting in our inner winter. We're still in a cocoon. We are not meant to um, be doing those things. Okay, now is the time. We have the Aries energy, which is very fiery. Aries is all about the self. I have an Aries daughter and she just is determined. She knows what she wants and she goes for it. That is the energy. And actually the Aries, yeah, the on the 25th of March, just in between the eclipse, I've just wrote this down because I'm not an astrologer, um, between the, the eclipse um, and the equinox, um, on the 25th, 21st of March, Venus, there was a Venus-Saturn conjunction. Venus is the feminine energy Saturn is the father energy so these were this was all about new foundations of the heart and yes being heart centered in your feminine but also being disciplined taking responsibility and being structured with the Saturn energy the Saturn is Lord of Karma the Saturn is our father energy and it's actually us being our inner father to yourself so father stuff could come up father wounds could come up masculine things could come up around that time okay and then the venus energy is about love authenticity compassion integrity um but that doesn't mean that you're a pushover okay you know the feminine energy there's the feminine energy there's two sides to the feminine okay you know there's the dark and the light feminine all right so the light is the mother mary you know that is and then the the dark feminine is mary magdalene okay and um we are both we are both sides, but we have had this pressure. It's, it's also, if it connects us back, if you think of we're in, I'm talking about biblical stuff, obviously here with Easter, let's go back to when it was created. Egg is the big symbol at this time. We have the Easter and the egg. Um, we have estrogen in the egg, you know. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the cosmic egg and um, that's a big symbol of Mary Magdalene. And what do we eat at Easter? Eggs, and what are eggs? We eat chocolate eggs. So symbols are just like, <laughs> You should know at this time. And um, Mary Magdalene is this divine feminine, you know, that was, you know, goes right back to biblical times of Adam and Eve. Okay, so you have, you know, Adam and Eve and Eve wasn't the original Eve. Lilith was the original Eve. Okay, but Lilith wanted to be equal to Adam. And Lilith is a woman in her power. She was, you know, she's the dark feminine. Okay, she is Mary Magdalene, she is Isis. Okay, I don't have Lilith's card here, but um, a woman in her power is seen as dangerous, is seen as, oh, don't, oh, you know, scary. But a man in her power is adored, and his power is adored, you know. So there's lots of stuff is coming up to be healed within our masculine and feminine cells because both our masculine and feminine energy has been out of balance in all males and females. Okay, and many of us have this Eve stain where we you know, we give all of ourselves over and then we get resentful and then we then we wonder why our hormones are out of balance and we wonder why our adrenals are out of balance and why we've got all of these conditions, you know, like fibromyalgia and um, thyroid problems, which not being able to speak our truth and, and ask for what we want and say for what we want, you know, and feel condemned for it, okay? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of symbolism at this time and within us, you know, there's the dark and the light feminine. Okay, and that is not bad. It is just means that, you know, she has boundaries. She knows her truth. She knows who she is. She goes after who she, what she wants, but it's all for the good of everybody involved. It's heart centered. It's not to take anybody down or to destroy another, which is the distorted, imbalanced feminine um, that many are clearing at this time because it's like, you know, we've just been given, 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 and then we get resentful and then all this heaviness builds up okay so um see, I'm going off another but they're all it's all so related back to the egg and creation and then what tempted eve with her desires and that was the snake and then that's been condemned as a symbol 
The snake is the kundalini energy, which is this female shakti energy that moves up the spine in males and females. Okay, that is our desires. What are we manifesting at this time? You know, um, our dreams and desires. And then we have a guilt. Oh, are we asking for too much? Or, you know, do I deserve this? Do I deserve this? Because of this Eve staying, you know, back to the snake. And the snakes are connected. You always see the snakes connected, which are connected to the kundalini. Kundalini is connected to the dragon energy. It's all earth energy. Okay. So, you know, what was the last activation? It was all about the dragons. Okay. Dragons are these beautiful, um, they're part elemental which is of the earth, earth, air, fire, water, and they are part angelic. But they, you know, they are not as soft as angelic energy. They get stuff done. They're action oriented. You know, when we are born, we have um, a guardian angel. We also have a guardian dragon. Okay. Uh, mine is an earth dragon, which um, that was shown. It took a while to come through. Um, and um, in the last activation, you know, we connected with, you know, and I explained the dragons. Um, there's 40, 50, 60, 70, right up to 90 dragons, okay? And in the last activation, the feminine and masculine ninth dimensional dragons came in. And in this activation, they came in again, okay? And actually, whenever I recorded this video and this episode yesterday, I shuffled these and these two dragons came out. Um, so we have the silver lunar dragon, which is the feminine, which is the moon. And then we have the golden solar dragon. And what happens at the eclipse? At the, eclipse? the first eclipse doorway was the full moon in Libra, all about relationships. To have good relationships with others, whether it be a partner, your children, your mother, your father, you know, work colleagues, friends, you have to have that union within the self. Okay, what happens actually at Astara? Astara is all about, where did I wrote this down to keep me on track? Astara is, Astara is all about goddess of spring and fertility. Okay, her symbols are the hare, which is the rabbit, fertility. Now, a hare, a rabbit, is able to be pregnant and give birth. Um, no, yes, give birth and get pregnant at the same time. It's a very mystical animal. It's all about leaping, that leap of faith as well. There we go again, okay? It's also connected to Bridget energy. We have the stag. What happens at Astara? Astara is all about new beginnings, planting those seeds. I have my seeds planted, which I planted on the spring equinox, sunflower seeds. And within those seeds, I put the energy of my intentions. It's a really good thing to do, okay? And you watch and you nurture them. Just like a baby, you just like a, you know, what happens at Astara is actually the union of the God and the Goddess traditionally, okay? And that is that union of yourself, your God and Goddess within, where they actually, they conceive the child, okay? And um, then it's birthed the winter solstice, which is why we have the stag energy, okay? A stag, the stag energy is connected to Athena, um, Diana, Artemis, they're all different names, and that's that bow and arrow. And she is the ultimate divine feminine, okay, where she's feminine and masculine balance. She has got a bow and arrow. She knows what she wants, but she's trusting where it lands. Whenever you're master manifesting anything, you know, know what you want, but surrender to the outcome, okay? And also, that's the energy of the light and the dark, the light feminine and the dark feminine, okay, which is the hunter and the hunted, okay? We, you know, you don't want to be naive to be hunted. You still got to protect yourself. You still got to speak your truth, the truth. You still got to have your boundaries, okay? And that is, you know, that Karnas energy. He's the god of fertility, okay? The god and the goddess of fertility. So what, you know, what is birthing within you at this time? What seeds are you planting, okay? It can be an actual, and helping many at this time with fertility, um, so it can be an actual physical baby, it can be a business, it can be an idea, or it can be an aspect of the self, okay? Um, so have a think about that at this time, you know? And when you direct your thoughts to that, then as we go through this eclipse doorway, and because it's a full moon, a full moon is all about release and letting go and detoxification, stuff will come up to help clear that any blocks to that manifestation um, taken form, 
that is what happens. Um, but what many of us do is we think we're doing something wrong. We 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 haven't nurtured nurtured ourselves enough to hold ourselves to stabilize ourselves through whatever is coming up or being triggered at the time. Okay, because a lot of it is illusion. A lot of it is coming up to awaken that aspect of ourselves that we haven't wanted to look at. We're being asked massively to look at our fears. If you want to um, connect with your desires, you've got to track down your fears because they will keep blocking them for you. And then you will not be building from strong foundations and it will all collapse anyway. Okay, so back to the dragons. Okay, this feminine dragon, which is the moon, the moon is reflective. You know, that is feminine energy. Okay, that we've just literally the eclipse that we are in at the minute, the door we opened, lunar moon, full moon eclipse in Libra, okay, which is the scales of balance, which is justice. What's the symbolism of Easter? I wrote this down. Symbolism of Easter is, you know, you've got these, the three days of Easter where Jesus died and he rose again, okay? That is the symbol. So that is traditionally what happened um, in Christian religious texts. Um, but what we do is we look at what has happened and what does that mean for us? What That's what we're going through at the minute is this death and rebirth and the rise of our light. Okay, the rise of the sun, the son of God. The sun is in our masculine, which is our light. And the sun as in, actually we have Horus energy here. Horus is the son of Isis, okay. And uh, Isis, um, you know, we've got Isis and Osiris and then Horus energy. Horus energy, and that's why many people at this time this is a cosmic gateway. That's the cosmic gateway that we're in. Horus is the eagle, the hawk, a rise and above a situation and seeing it from a higher point of view. Oh, this is the third eye. Okay, so many people, if you've noticed, we are going through these ascension symptoms at this time. Okay, I've been shown April. All I can hear is ascension into action, ascension into action. Okay, that is April. April is a month of action. Um... And March is preparing for that. It's clearing away any blocks or anything that's going to prevent you from moving forward. Okay. Ascension symptoms at this time are real. You know, this, this tiredness as our body is changes, our DNA is being activated as we are rebalancing. The old toxins are falling away. The old belief structures in the activation, we push all of our old beliefs, old thoughts, old negative thought forms out to the edge of the egg. And then we break out of the egg at the end and into this transformation that's like a, a peacock energy okay which is transformation which is also connected to abundance um and it's also connected to the the ultra major chakra which is the color t which is my brand and which is at the back of the neck um and for any of you that do not know this story which i'm sure you do you know the reason my branding is the teal peacock color is whenever i had my spiritual awakening i uh, attempted suicide and um, it was Halloween night, which is the ultimate death. That's what happens. It's all about death. So I went through my ego death. And um, I had a peacock costume that I was meant to wear and go out and it sat on the bed. You know, so that's why I celebrate the death and the rebirth. And I, thankfully, I'm still here. It was before I had children and all the rest. It was quite a long time ago. Um, but it got me on this path. You know, it got me to do this work that I do and talk about mental health and help us understand it, okay? Again, I'm trying not to go off a tangent, but all these things are relevant. Ascension symptoms, as I said, headaches, as these light coats come in, okay? The headaches are really connected to the third eye. We're getting blurry eyes. The eyes are connected to your third eye awakening. You're going to get more clarity. You're going to see the truth situations. The number eight is connected to truth. This is a year of truth. You will see things that you don't want to see, but you need to see them. We all need to see the truth of stuff and people and whatever. But trust that, um, let everybody stay in their own lane, okay? Nobody is inherently bad, but that doesn't mean you allow that behaviour. You just move away from them. Do not give them your energy. Put strict boundaries in place, okay? A really good book on boundaries is, what is that called? <laughs> I'll link it below. Setting Boundaries Sets You Free. Is it by Nancy Levin, I think? Really, really good book. because it, It'd be good on Audible because it has meditations at the end of each chapter. That really, really helped me, that book. Um, and I've read a lot about boundaries. So other sense, so as we talk about the eyes, the eyes are linked actually to the liver, okay? And I talk about this in the activation, um, liver health. 
well you can have a brand new liver in six weeks you know as a regenerative organ okay and many are being asked to they're being guided actually to detox you know whether they're consciously aware of it or not you know detox from coffee and um when your liver when you notice your liver is your managing director of the body so it needs to be happy okay um, otherwise you're going to feel very sluggish in the morning you're going to have low energy you're going to have like sort of little the whites of your eyes look a little bit yellow or stained or you're going to feel very sluggish in the morning you're going to maybe um possibly feel um maybe you put a wee bit of weight on because the liver um manages your metabolism as well you can have thyroid issues also um it is connected to your nail health to your eye health so you can have blurry eyes what the liver likes is it's also connected to your reproductive system so periods could be all over the place it's a big organ that needs nourished you know um um in perimenopause menopause actually so one of the things you can do is eat bitter foods okay sugar liver doesn't like sugar and fats okay so reduce those you know if you're wanting chocolate eggs get some lovely cacao <laughs> if you need a contact for that um i will send that i'll try and remember to put a put a link below as well but if i do because i forget um send me a wee note or a wee comment to add it in and i will um so eating carrots what do hares and rabbits eat carrots see the symbolism so carrots lemon garlic onion sour bitter foods not sweet okay um if any of us you know see when we have cravings this is very interesting actually when you have um like milky cravings like chocolate like ice cream like dairy that is you um wanting to connect more with your mother energy want to reconnect with your mother there might be issues around the mother wound possibly and when you have like sweet cravings you know like jelly sweets sweet sugar that is you needing to reconnect with the father wound or the, the masculine within yourself also um father um, issues which is very interesting as well so take note on cravings because that come up for me the last couple of weeks massively both <laughs> Um, but I do feel like it was helping bringing through this activation, okay? So, um, yeah, so that's talking about the liver. Um, talk, it was talking about um, the death and the rebirth and um, the masculine and feminine balance at this time as well. So these two dragons are supporting us. And you can send dragons on ahead to help clear the way. So, you know, we have the eclipse opening at the silver or the, the lunar eclipse and then it closes on the 8th. There's the number eight, okay? It's a number eight year. We collect eight eggs in this activation, um, working on the, the body, the chakras within the body. So lots of body issues are coming up with this ascension symptoms. Aches and pains in the body. I never get aches and pains in the body. You know, um, particularly low back, and that's the Kundalini, which is the masculine feminine balance, which is these two dragon energies. Okay, um, hip joint pain. So gentle movement is important as well. Okay, not fast moving where you're running from things. Okay, gentle movement, gentle yoga, yin yoga, um, walking. Um, even just doing stuff around the house that gets you into your body. Okay, you know, like cleaning and decluttering and things like that as well. Okay, bacon. I've talked a lot about that. You know, that's you getting into your creative energy, bacon and painting and things. Okay um so then around the 8th of april this doorway closes so we're in this you know at the time of recording this obviously when i recorded the activation it was a three-week window now it's a two-week window that we're in if you watch this today depending on when you're watching this actually it could be a one week or one day <laughs> or afterwards <laughs> but it's all still relevant for you to understand it and understand the symbolism because when you know that you're going through a massive death that's serving you that's and it's a result, you've caused it, nobody else has caused it. It's a result of you stepping into your truth, you being more conscious, you calling in more, you making those steps forward, then the old has to fall away. The old part of the old version of you that will sabotage that has to fall away. That is what the ego death is. That is what we're going through. And then there's the rise of, and which is why this activation is, you know, it's called cracked open, rise into your true authentic self. Okay, which is essentially what's happening. It's all good. 
So when you understand that, you can just sit back, relax, allow yourself to rest, allow the oil to fall away, allow yourself to go through a detox. If you were embarking on like a two week detox, cutting out these foods, you would expect detox symptoms. This is no different. Okay. So these two dragons, there's the, the masculine and the feminine. The silver lunar dragon, the Yeti and divine feminine light come into balance and practice peace, harmony and cooperation, expand your causal chakra. Gold and solar dragon helps you stand on your masculine power with wisdom, which is essentially crone energy also when we're talking about uh, minerals. Let your DNA be reprogrammed and light codes activated and become an inspired leader, which is your masculine energy. You need your feminine to create, which is what's happening right now. And that is essentially when you think of, you know, Easter, um, and I talked about the symbolism of, um, and we'll go on to talk about Easter now, actually. Um, you know, um, I wrote here, rise over good, over bad, justice over cruelty, hope over despair and life over death. You know, it's from the dark to the light. And that is what, that's how we start off this activation from the dark and into the light. Um, there are many different symbols at this time also coming up and forgiveness and heart healing is one. And one of the, the, the words I want to discuss is actually transformation. That's what we're going through, transformation. Like when you think of the ultimate symbol of transformation is actually the butterfly from the cocoon to the butterfly. It doesn't just go from a cocoon to a butterfly. It goes to the cocoon and inside the cocoon, it blows up. It literally is completely disintegrated and then it regrows into this beautiful butterfly. But you just don't see that. So you're in your little cave right now and there's a lot of things you cannot see. So please go easy on yourself and allow the all to fall away and try and stay out of your head, come into your heart, come into your body and in your feminine and just rest and have this massive trust and faith that you're exactly where you're meant to be. And um, the more you can hold on and be in your light and be your true authentic self, you know, um, you know, the lighter the year will be and everything you dream dream of and are yourshing for will manifest. But just understand, you know, this the full moon in Libra, Libra is a win-win outcome. It's also a super moon, which is emotions are running hot and the full moon eclipse is conclusions are being reached. But, you know, that will feel intense getting there. So just hang in there, okay? So... Let's talk about Easter, okay? And, you know, really when Jesus is in the tomb, the, the tomb is known as the cocoon or an egg, okay? So I want to bring in the energy of the cosmic egg, okay? And I actually am going to read this out, what this says, which I don't normally read from the book, but this is The Divine Feminine, Mary Magdalene. This is a brilliant book, actually. Sorry, this is the cards that accompany the book. It's called um, Mary Magdalene Revealed, one of my favourite books um, by Megan Watterson. Um and um, it's really lovely on Audible, actually. So the cosmic egg is the core symbol of the divine feminine creative force. It is a spiritual motif. And who did Jesus rise to but Mary Magdalene? Okay, this is her symbolism. It is a spiritual motif found in the creation myths of countless cultures and civilizations. It represents a birth, a new beginning or an expansion of life. In the Rig Veda, one of the oldest texts in any Indo-European language, the cosmos is described as a golden egg-shaped womb. The entire universe is said to have emerged from it. In Greek mythology, the Orphic egg hatched the primordial hermaphroditic deity, who then created all the gods and goddesses. It is depicted as an egg with a serpent, there's that side, wrapped three times around it. The number three is connected to Christ consciousness. In Egyptian, Chinese and Polynesian mythologies, among many others, creation begins with an egg. And in the Christian traditions, Mary Magdalene used the egg to describe how life begins after death. Um, this is <laughs> the story whenever she um, goes to present um, her case about Jesus and his risen, I think. And then she has an egg and I think... It turns red or something like that. I can't remember the story, but it's I, I can see it now. I don't know the exact details of it. Um, and in the Christian tradition, Mary Magdalene used the egg to describe how life begins after death, which is um, Jesus rising again. Um, yeah. In modern cosmology, it is believed that 13 billion years ago, the entire mass of the universe was compressed into a gravitational singularity, the so-called cosmic egg. 
and from that singular the universe has expanded ever since to its current state and continues in this moment to expand even further. Um, nothing needs to happen. Everything is exactly as it should. So this is the message connected to this. This is what I have to say it for you in your life. Because how is this relevant for you? Everything needs to be relevant for you. You hold the universe inside of you. All of creation, male and female. Okay, all life emerges from within you. If you try to exert pressure for something to exist before it's ready, that new life within you won't have time. It needs to fully form. Okay, and there's a lovely old story of a man walking past um, this butterfly trying to break out of its cocoon. And in his kindness, he just used a knife and he slit the two wee parts for its wings and legs to get out. And it, it needed the struggle to be able to build the muscles for the wings and that um, butterfly never flew. You know, so I, said, I love the symbolism and I love that story. We need to go through the struggle. We need to go through, you know, some of these times to appreciate where we are, to understand where we are. When I look back at the tough times I've been through, especially in the last couple of years, I am so grateful. I have grown as a person, as a soul, and then my work, you know, you know, how I can help others you know, it, it all makes it worth it, do you know? And it's all been pretty good, okay? So um, new life won't have the time it needs to fully form. The cosmic egg is the essence of the divine feminine. It is the ultimate symbol of the creative force that exists within each one of us. It is the dark, loving womb that holds and protects all creative expressions of life. If we allow what's within us to emerge in divine timing, in kairos or soul time, then what's within us will transform us. The egg is the trust that what is ours can never be taken from us. So there's no need to answer the ego's push to rush the process to impress others or to complete something on someone else's timeline. The egg is the faith. That's what we're needing at this time. Um, we're being asked, um, you know, when we think of sac like forgiveness, sacrifice comes up a lot at this time. Jesus sacrificing himself, sacrifice lambs, the leap. What are you being asked to sacrifice? What are you being asked to let go of? What you know? What are you being asked to give up to receive this? That old part of you that's not serving you, okay? That's maybe keeping you in your comfort zone. And you're being asked, no matter what, you're not going to be shown. You're not going to get confirmation before you make a step. You've got to just connect in with your heart, your balance, your feminine and masculine energies. What is my next step? And take that leap of faith, okay? If we allow what's within us to emerge in divine timing, then what's within us will transform us. The egg is the trust that there, what is up, that what is ours can never be taken from us. I've already said this. The egg is the faith that our process is sacred. That even in the midst of what looks like chaos or delay or even death, there's a tendril of new life that needs only our trust to eventually take form. And the egg is the knowing that life begins again after death from within. And we question here is, where am I ready to expand? That. that is why, and like, the egg has come into this activation. And again, I just brought through what I was being shown. I wasn't really understanding the symbolism until afterwards, until I put it all together. Okay. And, you know, before I bring through any activation, all I have to do is lie down and rest. And it's very frustrating and I get, get very confused and get very annoyed with myself because I want to get up and work or I want to do this. And I'm not even being told to do an activation just yet. So, you know, that's you really trusting in your feminine to rest and then the downloads come in. OK, and that will come in for you. OK, so hopefully I think that's enough symbolism that you will understand. The only thing I would add is which came in there at the end is... You know, as we're in this Easter portal, you know, we have the Easter weekend and then we have Holy Week, which is the week after. And I noticed, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm actually just off, but I didn't know I was off because <laughs> I just keep working. You know, when you're self-employed, um, I'll take a few days off, but I noticed that I was off and I thought this was interesting. So I'm going to go through my own stuff, I would say. So be prepared, you know. You know, when you are off, that's an opportunity for a lot of stuff to come in at a time when you can rest. You know, so try not to plan too much or, you know, if you're planning with people and you need to change, you know, do that. 
Um, but Holy Week, if you think about, you've got, you know, the days of the week are very connected to an energy. They're connected to a planet, you know, a planet as well. So obviously, you know, Jesus rose on Sunday, Palm Sunday. Palms are a symbol of hope. Sunday is connection, is a reset day. It's called a Sunday. <laughs> it's connected to the sun. It's connected to downloads coming in. So you must rest to receive on a Sunday. It's a reset for the week. Um, and then Monday, I mean, we have Easter Monday, is also Monday is Moon Day. It's connected to the feminine. So you're going to do a reflective place. That's why Mondays, people are really down on Monday. It's not, yes, it's because it's the first day of the week and work, but it's actually a Moon Day. So it's a day of going inward and reflective. You're not meant to do too much on a Monday, okay? And then Tuesday is connected to the masculine. I think Tuesday is connected to mars so a lot of um some conflict can come on tuesdays but anyway i just thought that was interesting um you know um to look at that as well okay so just as we close um i actually haven't pulled any cards um on on this video or audio so i'm just gonna i've got two sets just and um I actually have a set of cards I only use for one-to-one -one sessions. So I'm going to ask for three cards for guidance for the collective in working through the next couple of weeks as we go through this class of death, rebirth, this triple portal, um, so to speak. And um, yeah, so okay. Love it. So um, the first card to come up, and you couldn't write the book, is called Michelle. I mean, this is, so I am a, a cacao, ceremonial cacao facilitator, okay? I went on training to be able to um, be a facilitator for this beautiful feminine plant-based medicine um, that is the original form that, you know, chocolate took, but it's, you know, it's a beautiful um, medicine. Um, it's very calming in the body. It is a heart healer. So it will really help at this time. And many are getting like chest stuff and thymus energy. If you think of the thymus gland as the butterfly gland, you know, look at the gland and mention in butterflies. Um, but there is an energy attached to that spirit, which is why I can bring it through in activations online. I can bring the energy of cacao through without you actually physically drinking it. And this is the energy, it is the shell, okay? And it's connected to the full moon. It's connected to rainbows and hope and the chakra system, which I'm only putting together now. And this is this beautiful Mayan goddess of fertility and love and abundance. So um, if you feel called, get the activation to connect with her or simply just, stare at this card and connect with her and do you see or get the actual ceremonial cacao but just make sure that you do your research and it is ceremonial cacao because a lot out there isn't okay um when i see this card on wonder once i know that whenever you go through powerful healings and clearing especially as a woman your period will then be quite clean quite heavy in the next cycle okay so Please be aware of this. And if this happens, you're clear enough of energy. It's a really good sign, okay? Um, cacao is actually connected with fertility. So if anybody is struggling with the fertility, this would be a good physical um, drink to take on a day. And funny, yesterday I had three cups because I've been guided to cut coffee, which it's very, didn't think I'd be able to do, but literally it's not available <laughs> or if I go to bed. So I'm like, okay, I'm listening. So um, I'm just replacing this with cacao because cacao, you know, um, still gives you the energy boost, but without draining your dreams. Okay, so listen to your body. You know, I'm not sleeping, but I just know there's so much energy running through me. i um, being asked to do these videos and do things, and I have resistance as well, do you know, um, and stuff in my own life and whatever. So, <laughs> so I'm being guided to do a bit of a cleanse physically as well as this cosmic cleanse that we're doing. Okay, so yeah. And then we have the Shakti card here, okay, which is, what is what is this? This is Kundalini. Okay, Kundalini energy. There's the snakes. Snakes represent fears. The Shakti energy wants to move up through the body, okay? Um, you know, 
to connect with the kundalini i'm actually getting a twitch in my back right now so i might do a wee bit of a five minute thing at the end here um you just want to if you're like, actually going to invite you to close your eyes because the next card is the snake as well which is balance so just take a wee minute here to close your eyes slow your breath down breathing in through the nose for three and out for six i'm going to invite in the energy of the shell to just hold us now we're going to connect with your kundalini energy. And I want you to visualise the base of your spine. I want you to visualise two snakes. Normally these snakes can be, they don't like each other, fighting with each other. This is what happens, has been happening for years. As we fight against our masculine feminine energy. And we see the other as bad or evil or wrong. And I want you just to see the snakes, just start to actually see each other for who they are. I'm being shown um like two inner children and it's really the adults that are fighting but the inner children are longing to connect with each other to just see these two snakes just finally seeing each other and saying i can't do it without you you know i've been trying to do this on my own we need each other see these two snakes and you can see one is black one is white feminine masculine so let them embrace and let them give each other a hug okay and as they do that, I'm being shown the caduceus symbol, which is um, a staff, which is the spine, two wings at the top. The caduceus is the international symbol for healing. It's a sign connected to Mercury. And if it's a sign that I will place into people's bodies if they need a lot of healing. So I'm seeing that going into your spine right now. I will find it here when you open your eyes to show it to you. And I want you to see the symbol being placed in your back. And see these two snakes starting to, as they embrace and hug, they're starting to work together and move up through the spine. And I want you to see the chakra system along the spine. Okay, starting with the red and see an egg. Instead of just see an egg as each chakra, chakra means spinning wheel or wheel. So see the red, then orange, then yellow, and then green. Then in the throat, your turquoise and teal back indigo and violet okay i just work on the eight within the body for now and just see these interlinking snakes working up through the chakra system and then coming out at the top with these wings and the wings represent freedom and you and your power and you balanced um within that union take a deep breath and out and then you can open your eyes. I'm going to show you this caduceus symbol. And again, I'll try and put a wee bit of information about it. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong as well. <laughs> At the bottom, many of you will know it, but just in case, that's it there. Okay. And for anybody, obviously, on the podcast, you can look that up. It's just a staff with two interlocking, interlocking snakes and two wings at the top. Okay, so communication is going to be key at this time because Mercury's coming up there. So just as we close, we're in 52 minutes. I was trying to rush this yesterday, which is probably why it didn't. It wasn't right. I was rushing to a client. So I have time here. The kids are off. They're not disturbing me, which is amazing, which is how it's all meant to be. <laughs> Let's ask for three um, action cards as we move forward. Beautiful. So we have the door to spirit. Open this door to spirit. The Kips doorway is there. The Astara Equinox doorway has opened to new beginnings. Do you feel good enough to enter? Or are you going to have faith and trust and follow that dove of peace? Or are you going to stay in the chaos? The doorway, you know, it's just opening. It's a beautiful doorway of light. But I can't see it on the other side. So you have to have peace and faith. What have you got to lose? Rest. Please rest. Rest, 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 rest. I can't express that enough at this time. Okay. And if you feel called to do your activation, that will really, really help. Because sometimes I, a lot of my clients will book in as they're about to finish for holidays for a couple of weeks. And it helps them to really wind down to do a session. That's what that activation will do. It'll help you just really switch off. And then I love this last card. I want you to do that. You're going to, as the solar 
new moon, solar eclipse on the 8th of April brings in action. You're going to start to strategize, you're going to start to do, you're going to really feel this forward momentum, which I'm very excited about and happy for. And that is what happens in the tradition of the death and the birth. You know, the cre you create in the, in the feminine of rest and you bring the, the masculine through for action to move forward. And then the card at the bottom of it is Archangel Raphael. And that's all about heart healing. Kakai is a heart healer. The energy at this time is all about forgiveness in the heart. Who do you need to forgive in your life? When you hold on to anger or resentment, that is only affecting your energy field. Now, you don't always need to forgive them, but you can accept that and move on. You know, when we do, I talk a little bit cord cut. When we do cord cutting, yes, I can help cut your cord. You can cut your cords, but they will reattach if you haven't dealt with the root wound. And you can keep reattaching if that is not healed. That is what I do in the one-to-ones. It's very, very powerful. That's why some times when people say, I've dealt with this, and I can still see it in their energy field, and we haven't, because we haven't dealt with it in a heart centre way. The heart is the bridge. You know, it's interesting, that horrible um, um, thing in the news where the bridge, um, the big tanker thing crashed into the bridge. I normally don't watch the news, but I knew when I seen it last night was meant to, you know, many of our hearts are just sort of breaking open at the minute because it's the bridge, okay? To, to get, you know, that's where our alignment is, that's where our union is, that's where love is, you know, that's where we create from as well. You know, the heart and the womb are these two connected portals, okay? So we just see what's coming up to be healed, work through the stuff, hold yourself at this time, and trust and have faith as you take the leap and move forward through that beautiful door, that cosmic door, okay? Connect with the earth, ground your energies at this time, eat plenty of vegetables, go for walks, have lovely baths, like rest, you know, even just try some lovely vegetarian meals, just, you know, reduce coffee, sugar, be mindful, okay? Be mindful at this time, but don't forget to have fun. The star energy, spring equinox, Aries, is all about the fun and the maiden. In this activation, the theme of Alice in the Wonderland comes in. Be in your wonderland. Go on that treasure hunt. Go look for those gifts. Go and play in the place of wonder and curiosity of life. We need our maiden energy or our youth and males to start new projects, new things, and give us that excitement for it. So what excites you in your life? And go and explore that thing. Much love. Thank you for listening and watching and staying with me and have a beautiful Easter.